Water pressure depends only on depth, not the container shape. Here we have three containers of the same depth. The pressure at the bottom of each container is exactly the same for all three containers because they have the same depth. Even though there's much more water in this one, weighing a lot more than this one, the pressure and therefore the force on the bottom of these containers is exactly the same. How is that possible? Let's take a look at the simplest example first. Uh, a container with parallel sides, like this one, with water inside, and compare it to a stack of wooden blocks. I'm better drawing cross-section views, so that's what I have here. This block weighs two pounds, so it exerts a downward force of two pounds on the block below it. This block is not moving, so there's a counterbalancing force of the lower block pushing against the upper block to also two pounds. Um, these two blocks together weigh four pounds, so they exert a, a force of four pounds on this block. And likewise, this block exerts a counterbalancing force of four pounds. Finally, the three blocks together weigh six pounds. They exert a force of six pounds on the table, and the table exerts a counterbalancing force of six pounds back. Now let's look at the water. This block of water weighs two pounds and exerts a force of two pounds downward on the water below it, and the water below has a counterbalancing force upward. The forces are balanced throughout the water. The water also exerts a sideways force on the walls of the container outward, and the wall exerts a counterbalancing force against the water. Now, the forces against the wall are always perpendicular to the wall. We're interested in the vertical force at this point. So we could ignore the, the sideways force for now. This much water weighs four pounds and exerts a force of four pounds downward on this block of water. And again, there's a counterbalancing force. Finally, this whole block of water exerts a total force of six pounds on the bottom of this container, and the bottom of the container has a counterbalancing force, again, of six pounds. Now that's the total force on the bottom of the container. What is pressure? Pressure is force divided by area. Let's say that the bottom of this container measures four by four inches, or 16 square inches. In that case, the pressure is six pounds divided by 16 square inches. That's about 0.4 pounds per square inch, rounding to the nearest tenth. What does that mean? That means if you open a hole at the bottom of the container that measures one by one inch, you need to apply a force of 0.4 pounds in order to prevent the water from coming out. The water pushes in all directions. So if you open a hole on the side, it's the same story. You need to apply a force of 0.4 pound to stop the water from coming out. It even works upward. If you have an opening that curves upward, you need to apply 0.4 pounds of force to keep the water from gushing out. Now let's look at the same thing using SI units or metric units. A one kilogram mass exerts a downward force of 9.8 newtons. I'll round that off to 10 newtons. Newtons is a measure of force. Kilograms is a measure of mass. Mass is a resistance to acceleration. Whereas a force, a newtons is a force. So newtons, 10 newtons down for the first one. There's a counterbalancing force of 10 newtons. 20 newtons down counterbalancing force of 20 newtons, and finally 30 newtons at the bottom. Now let's still take a look at the water. This block of water weighs 10 newtons, the counterbalancing force of 10 newtons. For this block of water, 20 newtons, 20 newtons. And finally, at the bottom of the container, 30 newtons of water exerts a downward force of 30 newtons. The bottom of the container exerts a counterbalancing force of 30 newtons. Now again, pressure is force divided by area. The total force is 30 newtons. Let's say the bottom of the container measures 10 by 10 centimeters. 
or 0.1 meter by 0.1 meter, which is one hundredth of a square meter. So the pressure at the bottom of this container is 30 newtons divided by 0.01 square meter equals 3,000 pascals. One pascal means one newton per square meter, uh, or equivalently three kilopascals. 3,000 pascals is the pressure at the bottom of this container. Now for each 10 centimeters of depth, we have one kilopascal of pressure. The pressure increases in a linear fashion for, as you go deeper and deeper inside the container. One kilopascal at 10 centimeters deep, two kilopascals at 20 centimeters deep, and three kilopascals at 30 centimeters deep. That's three kilopascals at the bottom of the container. Okay, now let's look at this equivalent container with the same area at the bottom. I maintain that pressure at the bottom is still three kilopascals. The extra water does not exert any more pressure on the bottom. Why not? If we're looking at a wooden block, this is certainly not true. You say we have a block like this that weighs a certain amount. And in a bigger block with the same area at the bottom, it will exert a greater force and there have a greater pressure, that is force per area at the bottom. That's because this, the only counterbalancing force is the bottom. The weight of this is transmitted through the block to the bottom. Now that's for a block of wood. Water is different. It cannot transmit forces through itself other than pressure. Uh, because it has no strength. Uh, you cannot twist or bend water. It just flows into and fills the container. And it ex exerts a force um, perpendicular to the container. So the downward force of this additional block uh, gets up, it pushes against this container, not against the bottom. So we have the same pressure at the bottom. Now you may not be totally convinced. So let's go outside for a live demonstration that'll help shed some light on this. Here I'm simulating a liquid by putting uh, by, a, by a bunch of rice. Now the rice is not an exactly a perfect uh, model. It's an approximate model because the rice has friction. Imagine if the rice grains didn't have friction, what would happen? You can put something in, you can put a solid thing in there, and it stays put because the forces on all sides of the piece of cardboard are the same. You can put it in at any angle, um, you know, tilt it or whatever, and it doesn't move because the forces are balanced. Now imagine we take, I have a piece of cardboard here that's that um, that will fit in fit in snugly here. I'll push that all the way down. And again, the forces are balanced. Now what happens if we empty empty the, the rice from from one side? So I'll do that right now. Cover up one side. Pour out the rice. Now you see that the rice flattens out. If it were had no friction, it would not form a pile at all. It would flatten into a single layer. Okay, now what happens? Oops. Well, if you imagine that I put this, push this back and hold it here, it exerts the same force against this, against the cardboard, as it would if there was rice in there. I could pour the rice back. You can see that. So it's the same force on either side, whether or not this side has any any rice in it. Sorry about the airplane noise. So we have this wide container full of water. Let's divide this container into sections like this and insert a waterproof cardboard wall in here and here. Um, the forces are balanced on 
both sides of this wall, just like in the rice container. So this piece of cardboard doesn't move. It just sits there. Now imagine we glue, glue the cardboard at the bottom here and here and empty the water out, out up from the sides. Now you see this water inside this section of the container is now exerting a pressure against this wall that's exactly the same as it was against the water. But now this wall is holding back that force instead of, uh, instead of this water. There's stress on this wall and this joint. And if it's not glued well, it's going to collapse just like it did in the rice container. But if we've got a strong container here with a strong joint, the this water will exert the same exact same force as it did against this water when there was no wall. Same for this side. So we now we have the exact same situation we had before with parallel sides. The depth, uh, the pressure depends only on depth. And the water, when you pour it into this container, it's not under equilibrium but it settles down until the pressure is constant at each depth. One kilopascal here, two kilopascals here, and three kilopascals at the bottom. Now what about this container? It has less than 30 newtons of water in it. How can, say, 12 newtons of water exert a downward force of 30 newtons on the bottom of this container? To find out, let's look at the original container first with parallel sides with 30 newtons of water. Imagine we put two pieces of cardboard in here like this. Again, it doesn't move. The pressure is balanced on all sides. Now, let's add two more pieces of cardboard down here. And we see that, again, the forces are balanced, although vertically this time. We have the weight of this water pushing down on this piece of cardboard, and then the counterbalancing force of this water under pressure pushing upward. Again, the forces are balanced. Now, let's again say we glue this these walls together and empty the water on the outside, and you see that this piece of cardboard is now pressing down on the water with the same force that it did when there was water inside. Now, there's again, this joint is on. There's a stress on, the, on these joints. If, if you didn't glue it well, this is going to collapse and shoot upward. But if it's strong, you've got the same force coming down, and the water inside is pushing up with the same force as it did when there was water in here. This little piece of cardboard is taking the role of this big piece of water here. So we have 12 newtons of water pressing down, and we must have 18 newtons of additional force pressing down for a total of 30 newtons of downward force on this water. That's why we can have 30 newtons of force on the bottom of this container, even with only 12 newtons of water. The other additional force comes from the container pushing downward. And of course, we have a counterbalancing force. This explains why we have 30 newtons downward force inside the container. But outside the container, resting on the table, we only have the weight of the water inside, 12 newtons. Um, plus the weight of the container itself, the counterbalancing force is the water pressure upward against this container. That, that's, uh, what, 18 newtons upward uh, to reduce the total weight of this container on the table. So for any size or shape container, the depth, the pressure depends only on depth. One kilopascal at this depth, two kilopascals at this depth, and three kilopascals uh, on the bottoms that are even uh, at the same depth. Now, if you're not totally convinced, you could punch a hole in the bottom of each container and connect them with a pipe. And you would see that no water flows. If you would initially fill the pipe with water and then connect it up, no water flows. If the pressure here was greater than the pressure here, water would flow from here to here, but it doesn't. As you know, the water seeks its own level, so no water flows. The pressure at the bottom of the three containers is, is exactly the same. So I hope that helps you understand why the pressure depends only on depth and not the shape of the container.